much for being a part of our video today. Rudy is holding up, and, and push a little closer to the deal, Rudy is holding up a map of, of the Sinai Peninsula. The Sinai Peninsula. With part, part of Israel to, the, to its east. Okay. And so what we're going to read today is the desert wanderings. Moses is recounting this. This is where he's actually telling history. So if you were to give a present day, he is in the present day looking back to the past to get the people of God ready to enter into the promised land uh, as a witness to God's instructions to them about how to live their lives as his people. Is that a fair? Correct. And to be thinking about how long it took for that generation to to die, to pass away, so that they could eventually come into the land because God said none of them were going to come into the land. Right. So I'm going to read, and why don't you maybe, if you can, point out some of those highlights on, on your map. Uh, what it, I mean, that may be too much. No, I can go. To try it out? All right. We're in, we're in chapter 2, verse 1. We journeyed back in the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. As the Lord told me, we scouted Mount Seir. Where is that? Where's Mount Seir? Mount Seir is in Edom, so it's somewhere in Somewhere there. there. Okay, you all got it? Uh, then the Lord said, You skirted the hill country long enough, head north, charge the peoples you follow. You're about to pass through the territory of your kindred, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir. And they'll be afraid of you, so be very careful not to engage in battle with them, for I will not give you even so much as a foot length of the land, since I've given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. Let's just stop. Let me read another verse or two, excuse me. You shall purchase food from them for money, you should may eat. You shall also buy water for them for money that you may drink. Where are we? Right in there? Okay. Surely the Lord your God has blessed you in all your undertakings. He knows you're going through this great wilderness. Let me stop. Why don't you, why don't you talk about why the children of Esau were important to God and why the people who had left Egypt were not to uh, engage them in battle. Uh, Esau is Jacob's brother. And uh, because he is a child of Abraham, uh, the inheritance that God gave them was theirs. It was never going to be taken away from them. In the same way that if we decide that Jesus is the only one worthy to reign, our inheritance is to be one with him, which can never be taken out of his hand. There you go. All right. With that in mind, think about being in charge of leading a million and a half people to wander in that desert that uh, Rudy just held up. Throughout this peninsula. Right. Uh, for 40 years. Right, right. I was, I was with a uh, leader of our denomination back when I was a young preacher. I mean, in my early 30s. And he went through a passage similar to this, and he talked about pastors and churches. And he said, sometimes God calls a pastor to be the one who helps do the funeral for a church. And, and it was like it was like a knife stuck through my heart. And I remember thinking in my head, oh God, may it never be so that I would be the pastor who was only there to see the church end up and die. Now, I, don't, I personally don't think you have to do that. I, I think that you can change and you can, you can think of what God's doing and you, the churches don't have to die. But that was the role of Moses. He was the leader of people as one after another, after another, after another died. And they had one funeral after another. You want to comment on that? Maybe I've overstated that. No, you, you didn't. I uh, was just trying to see how that kind of works into the economy of God. Our problem is, is that we think
think about before Jesus that death was final. And, uh, but I believe that, I personally believe that every person that was used to help us come to a understanding of how God's kingdom works is a servant. Right. Therefore, even in their death, they serve the purpose for us to know that their iniquities, their sin, separated them from God. We find out much later in the, in the, the life and the resurrection of Jesus that this is not the case. Yet, even 700 years prior to that, in our study of Isaiah, in the 66th chapter, we saw that the people out of the New Jerusalem could go out to its outskirts and view over a valley and see the people that were separated from God for eternity. Uh, therefore, in my heart, uh, everybody that makes a decision for the Lord or that he has used to help other people to make a decision, it becomes his judgment, not our judgment right. of that person's life. Right. And I believe that we see that over and over and over again just as we could, even though God said, I have loved Jacob, but I have always hated Esau, he's telling the children of Israel that they cannot have any part of the possession that he gave to Esau. And then as they move north, he's going to tell them that you can't have the possessions of Lot either. Right. Let me just read that. So we headed out along the route. This is verse uh, 9. We headed out the route of the wilderness of Moab. The Lord said to me, don't harass him over, engage him in battle, for I'll not give any land as a possession. Since I've given R, is that right? And that R is actually just the name for Moab, right? Yeah. Uh, as a possession uh, to the descendants of Lot. Okay? So let's, let's read on that. Now I'm going to move down to verse, uh, the end of verse 13. Uh, we proceeded across over the water. Z-E-R-E-D, pronounce that for me. Zared. Zared, thank you. And so we crossed over the Wadi Zared, and the length of time we had to travel from Kadesh Barnet until we crossed the Wadi, uh, Wadi Zared was 38 years until the entire generation of warriors had perished from the camp, as the Lord had sworn concerning us. Any comments there? Uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. The interesting thing is 40, uh, God ends up picking it up multiple times and showing us that 40 ultimately is the number, is one of the numbers that he uses to make a word phrase for testing. Uh, customers coming, but we're not eating till three. Right. <laughs> uh, but testing again, uh, so when, when we think about what's going on here in this 40 years, uh, there is a simple understanding that they were in the desert for a long time and it took this amount of time to, for the last warrior to die. But it also conforms to God's use of, the num of numbers. Uh, numbers are a language to the Lord and he used certain numbers over and over again and that's one of the things that we're able to see in scripture that gets repeated uh, in, in a most conforming way that there's no way that these things happen within the, the numbering order unless there was a mind behind the creation. Correct. Correct. And everything God does conforms to everything else on multiple levels that we don't even know most of the time. Yeah, absolutely. But the more we investigate, and this is why the word is said to be alive, he will allow you to see more and more and more depth, depth when he decides you're ready. Correct, correct. So we're gonna stop there uh, for today. Uh, the, the, the purpose of looking at this is to say, we're on a journey with God. We gotta hold his hand. We've gotta walk with him. That is the key 
And that's the direction we're going. Rudy, thank you. One can more I, thing, can I, one please. More, one, more, one more way to, to, to look at 40. Jesus was in his resurrected form for 40 days. Right. Uh, which basically was a testing for the people. But yet, he was away for them for 10, which is the other number God uses for testing. The interesting thing is, is when you put the two tests together, the two witnesses, you end up with 50, which is the number that he chose to show you that you get back what you lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Rudy. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.